think. Biscuits. Yeah, it's Is it not? Yep. It is coming up. Am I looking like Great Grog this week? Mm -hmm. You're sniffing it. Am I what? You're sniffing the box. No, I'm sniffing the box. Have you smelt it? They're really quite delicious. The very good. Are These are delicious. These are the top selling ones. Do let me know when I'm when my clock is a little. I can't see my clock, but I'm six fifty eight, yep. Uh, I'm going to start my banter now, if I may. Uh, it's Richard from Great Grog here, uh, and we're going to do a live wine tasting of some Hungarian wines, which uh, is quite interesting. Not many people have had Hungarian wines before, and so that's going to be quite interesting, I think. Um, I think we're going to just going to crack on. Um, I'll repeat some of this at the end just in case you miss it if you just do join us late. Uh, so Richard from Great Grog on this lovely warm evening in Edinburgh. Uh, striking up to 28 degrees today so hence my face is a little bit burnt because I'm out for a cycle. Um, right, any of these wines and any other wines from our wine list uh, if you'd like to order them on the back of this tasting or over the course of the weekend uh, you can key that in uh, to the website and you get 10% off and so all you need to do is put a little coupon in Facebook all in capitals so 10% off any wines whiskies beers whatever uh, from our range over the weekend and it's 10% off if you key in Facebook in capitals so that's uh, three wines tonight. We've got a Little Cricket Gruner Veltlena, which is an interesting great variety in itself. Uh, we've got a Cardos Ferment from the village of Mad, which is a great name. And uh, Donovar Pinot Noir from the south of uh, Hungary. So three Hungarian wines, three different areas, and completely different great varieties. Uh, Pretty much the ferment is the only one that is 100% uh, indigenous to Hungary. Uh, the Gruner Verlena is also grown in Austria. You may come across it in Austria. Uh, that's where most of it is grown. So we'll crack into the Gruner Verlena first. Uh, screw top. Just turn the collar. Pops. Just clicks it open like that. Uh, pour yourself two thirds of an inch, thereabouts. And Right, we'll crack into this one. Uh, what about this? Uh, this is from the Danubiana Winery, uh, which is actually owned by some French folk. So Chateau Grand Chez is the owner of this winery, which is a bit odd. Um, a couple of years ago, they, there's a lot of foreign investment. Okay, but I suppose a little bit of the history of Hungary, uh, why we don't see a lot of Hungarian wines on the shelves at the moment, um, because the communists ran it. So from 56 till 1990, uh, it was communist and it was pretty much all state run and they just went for quantity. Um, quality was a rude word. Okay, They just went for quantity. The primary market was Russia. So for the, that kind of 30 something year period, um, they just went for rubbish wines to sell to the Russians in quantity. So really it's only since 1990s, the last 30 years, that they've actually started to go back to some kind of quality regime. Uh, a couple of other things about Hungary. Uh, they are the 17th biggest wine production country on the planet. Uh, slightly behind, okay, take a guess, New Zealand, okay, they're number 15, and Brazil, who are number 16. 
Uh, the top ones you've probably heard of, we've got uh, uh, number one is Italy, Spain, France, um, we've then got uh, Argentina, China, yeah it's quite a weird mix of stuff, you probably haven't had many Chinese wines. So Hungary, quite a big production area, but they really need to get the quality act together. And once they get the quality act together, they have the, the agricultural base, the climate. The climate is a, is a uh, warmish kind of Mediterranean in the south, and it's continental, uh, warm summers, cold winters, uh, everywhere else going up the country. Right, let's get into this. Give it a spin about, have a wee sniff. Okay, if you've not had Grüner Veltliner before, um, It'll probably be quite a pleasant surprise. It's a, it's quite an aromatic grape. It's it's got a little bit of kind of Rieslingy character to it, but it's not actually. Um, its parents are not Riesling. Um, they are Tramina, as in Gewurztraminer is one of the parents. It's a crossing of two different Vitis vinifera grapes. Uh, one is Tramina, and one is I'm going to have to look this one up. It is Saint Georgian Rebe, I think, is what it's called from my notes. Um, I'm not going to remember that by the end of the tasting, but uh, so Tramina, the Gewurztraminer, being one of the parents, will contribute towards that aromatic character because Gewurztraminer is Traminers are always really fruity and kind of uh, expressive. So let's give it a slurp. Okay, lots of fruit in the middle. Here. Okay, bear in mind, uh, should have done the price on this six pounds ninety nine. That is not the most expensive wine on the planet. That's pretty good for six ninety nine. It's not. Uh, it's not the best wine I've had all year. It's probably the best six ninety nine wine I've had all year, though. So, fruit in the middle of the palate, good zest, acidity on the sides. I'm gonna have another slurp of that. What do you think of that? It's kind of tangy, a little bit of citrus fruit, um, peaches, pears. Pears, pear fruit maybe in the middle there, just on the, the middle of the tongue. Um, good acidity on the sides, really refreshing. Um, one thing about um, Grüner Veltliners, um, historically they've always been really good with food. So they're very good food matching wines. Um, okay, one of the things, if you did buy a pack of these three wines, you'd have got a little pack of biscuits. So this is the, the drinks biscuits, the drink drinks bakery by Andy Murray not the tennis one um, and this is Lancashire cheese and spring onion which I think will go with that quite well so get a little bit of your biscuit okay slightly savory um, let's have a try of the wine now that goes quite well uh, what is happening there is that you get the intensity of flavour off the biscuit and that kind of really coats the, the tongue and the mouth and all over your palate. But the Grüner Veltliner, um, I didn't mention the kind of citrusy character, that slices through the biscuit. So I don't know whether you want to do that again. I quite fancy doing that again. No, no, I better not. But yeah, you get the gist. You get the gist. Very tasty. Those biscuits are jolly good. And the wine goes quite well with them. Um, what else would you have it with? Uh, Seafood, shellfish, uh, light dishes, linguines, veggie linguines. Um, what else? Lighter dishes, I think. Um, or something that needs a little bit of cutting through. White fish, um, something to, to balance that acidity. That's jolly good. I quite like that. Any questions? Any questions? You know, feel free to ask ask any questions. Um, 20,000 people were killed in the uh, Hungarian Revolution, 1956. That's a pretty, that's a wadge of people in 1956 in Europe. When the, the Russian tanks went in. Anyway, cheers. We'll finish that. So that was Little Cricket Gruner Veltliner, £6.99 from Great Grog. Maybe said it's hard to believe this lovely wine is 6 99 I know, it's pretty good, isn't it? It's, it's kind of... Um, and owned by the French. I think I'm going to go and buy a vineyard, retire to Hungary. Yeah. Anyway, little cricket. Okay, we're going to do the the next white, Cardos Ferment. Uh, Mad on the label is the village, and Tokai is the region. 
So, and ferment is the great variety. So, check out your uh, Grunewald liner. Again, just turn the collar and the wine just pops open. It saves lacerating your fingers on the sharp edges of the, the screw top. Screw top's always best. So I had this recently and this is, this is jolly good. You'll like this. Uh, right. Same kind of colour as the previous wine. Uh, no oak. This is hand-picked, so hand-harvested. Uh, they bring it into the winery um, in Tokai, in the village of Mad. Uh, they bring it into the winery and they uh, destem, so that means they pull the stalks off the the grapes, and they smash up the grapes. So they they do a um, they put it through a crusher destemmer, so it crushes it all up. They put in their local yeast, the the Tokai yeast. So it's if it doesn't start the ferment, they will inoculate, but with the local yeast. This is not imported yeast. They will then. Um, ferment it, so they ferment it in stainless steel tanks, only stainless steel, no oak. They then leave it after fermentation for three months in those tanks and they do what's called batonnage and batonnage sounds like a, um, a pretty brutal thing to do to wines, a bit of battening, but really what they're doing is they're stirring up the gross lees on the bottom of the tank. By stirring up the gross lees, they're just stirring it up, they stick a stick in and stir it all up uh, they get these gross leaves to rise up into the into the tank and that imparts more character into the wine so you get this kind of yeasty character going into the wine champagne think champagne that's that's gross leaves matured that's why champagne has that kind of bready toasty yeasty character back to the wine have a sniff it's not quite as smelly as the grunewald lena still nice nose uh, palate Wash it all the way around your mouth. Okay, it's more textural. It has definitely more character, body, weight, um, and texture in the mouth. Acidity is good on the sides, really fresh. Good fruit in the middle of the palate. Better length of flavor. So I think comparing the two, I think the Gruner has more fruit and is more kind of crisp citrusy style. Uh, was the ferment has more texture, more body. Um, we'll probably go with a little bit kind of richer foods, creamier, fuller. Um, yeah, that's excellent stuff. I really like that. I tell you what it reminds me of, Pic Poule de Pine. That's what I think. It has that kind of uh, texture of Pic Poule. It's refreshing, it's fruity, but it has the texture of Pic Poule as well. I'm gonna have another slow. Oh yes, biscuits. Should do the biscuits. How much is it? £9.49. So that's on offer at the moment, it's a summer offer. Uh, that's pretty good for nine quid though. Uh, bit of biscuit. So, drink the biscuit. Just gonna have a little bit. This will be interesting to see how it works. Jolly good. Yeah, that's excellent. Seems to lift the biscuit. The biscuit uh, seems to be enhanced by the wine. It's a kind of texture thing going on there. It's balance. Um, wh when does wine go with food? When it's balanced. When both benefit from each other. So if the, the wine gets a little bit better with the food, I think it possibly does. And if the food gets a little bit better with the wine, I think it lifts the flavor of the biscuit. So I'm gonna do that again, just to check. Mm, like that dry ferment that's a winner that is an absolute winner nine pounds 49 minus your 10 percent discount so take 94 pence off uh call it a quid off it's eight eight and a half quid just over lovely andrew questions was, andrew was just saying he went to a wine tasting in budapest ah. just before lockdown some real good hidden gems and good value for money i i really want to go i was just saying to my better half here, Marin, that I want to go to Budapest. Yeah, I've never been, so I need to go. It's an absolute, 
So that took Tokai from right up in the top right-hand corner of Hungary, and that's where the region is. I mean, I've had Tokai before over the course of the last 30 years of another wine trade. And this is the first one I've ever had that was dry. They've always been dessert wines. I mean, they've been making wine in Tokai for about 500 and something years, and it was the first region in the world in 1700 that was a protected area. Um, you know, like a DOC in France, like Champagne or, or you know, uh, Burgundy, Gevry, Chambertin, Poligny, Morachet, Chablis, Rioja, all these names that are protected these days. Tokai was the first one on the planet that was registered in 1700. So they've been making decent booze there for you know, a long, long time. So, uh, But it's always been dessert wines. So they've, they've made uh, uh, Tokai Atsu. Atsu means uh, noble rotted, Botryatus wines like Sauternes. Um, they started it long, long before the French did. You know, they were making dessert wines, um, and they had a major export. You know, it was back two, three hundred years ago, pre, pre-communist era. They they were big exporters all over the world, and uh, all the royal families of the, on the planet drank Tokayatsu. That was the booze of choice. You know, long before champagne came along. Last wine. You ready for that? So finish your white. Hang on, Andrew Murphy works with. Me. Matt Jess, who I work with. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Pinot Noir. So, okay, I kept this slightly cooler because it's 20 odd degrees today, and really, Pinot Noir is one of these um, grapes that you can put a little bit of a chill on. So, you don't need to serve Pinot Noir at 25 degrees, you know, room temperature 20. You can chill a little bit, and the reason being is because Pinot Noir has low tannins, so it has quite a lot of fruit. So because it has low tannins, when you chill it, the fruitiness drops and it still stays in balance. Okay, if you had a Cabernet Sauvignon, which has lots of tannins, if you drop the fruit of the Cabernet Sauvignon by chilling it, because that's what happens, you, you lose fruit flavor, it goes out of balance and it suddenly tips into the, the, the tannins uh, side of the, the equation, which means it becomes really dry and bitter. Pinot Noir doesn't have a lot of tannins, so you can drop the fruit by chilling it and it still stays in balance. And that's why you can chill Pinot Noir or Beaujolais, Gamays, um, really light reds. Uh, another screw top? Excellent, I love screw tops. So when you see this, uh, pale. So, okay, this is an excellent summer red wine. You can see right the way through it, so the intensity of color um, isn't very big and that also indicates that it probably doesn't have a lot of tannins as well because color and tannins roughly come out of um, uh, dissolution in in winemaking so they dissolve in winemaking into the wine at a roughly the same kind of rate so if it's pale it's probably got low tannins so I spin it about fruity raspberry uh, cherries possibly cherries red fruits yeah, that's got a pretty good nose. That's okay. Six pounds ninety nine. That's Pinot Noir is. How many Pinot Noirs do you get on the planet for six pound ninety nine? Uh, it's also owned by the French, by the way. So this is the same owner's Grand Chez as the Little Cricket was at the start. So uh, the French have obviously identified that uh, the Hungarians can make bloody good wine at six pound ninety nine. Give it a try. Okay, just as I suspected, uh, low tannins. When you rub the your tongue across the roof of your mouth, uh, it's not very gritty. It's not very bitter. Um, it's not like uh, sandy, gritty type feeling, which is tannins. It's very smooth. Lots of fruit in the middle there. Okay, acidity on the side. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is not the best Pinot Noir I've had this year. Probably not the best Pinot Noir I've had in the last few weeks, but it is the best, cheapest Pinot Noir that I've had in a while. So that's that's um, yeah, what's what's not to like? That's that's a kind of Monday to Thursday quaffing when the sun is shining. Put a little bit of a chill on it. Um, I would consume that with drinks biscuit. Okay, there we go. Let's see how it manages to fight off a drinks biscuit. Try a little bit of that. A 
that's okay. That's not bad. Yeah, I like that those quite well. Weirdly makes the drinks biscuit seem a little spicy. Why, why is that happening? It seems to either bring out the spice in the wine or the wine is bringing out the spice in the biscuit. There's a kind of pepperiness going on in the biscuit. And it, that really, that's, that's good. I like that. That's good. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Yeah, that's that's um, frighteningly good value. That's the only way I could describe that. So this is from the Panon uh, region down in the southwest of Hungary. So if I took I'm top right in the, the northeast, uh, the little cricket is kind of about 50 miles outside of Budapest going west. And then the Panon where the Pinot Noir is down the bottom of Hungary. So this is more kind of uh, Slovakia end, Croatia end, as opposed to the Tokai as the Ukraine end, the right hand top top corner. I mean, they're not bad, you know. The little cricket six ninety nine, Cardos nine forty nine, and the Donovan Pinot Noir at six ninety nine. Um, ten percent off. So type in Facebook all in capitals to get ten percent off any wines uh, up until Sunday night. Uh, if you've got any questions, I will. Happy to answer them, and I'll you know, bung them in, and I'll answer them afterwards. Um, apart from that, I hope you've enjoyed them. I certainly have. A pleasant surprise. Um, and my Budapest trip is going to be uh, booked quite soon, I think. Once, obviously, things get better. Cheerio. Thank you for watching. Bye. Oops. Get that off.